evening, everyone. It is my pleasure to welcome you to our 2022 Christmas musical. It's a great joy, since we haven't been able to have a musical for several years, to um, once again celebrate the great mystery of the Incarnation of Jesus coming to dwell among us as we prepare for, for Christmas. The students have been preparing for months with uh, Mrs. Jordan Smith, our music teacher, and Carol Zager, our choreographer. And um, I think you're in for a treat. When Mrs. Smith first shared with me the script back in September, I thought, wow, this is a script that is written just for St. James School, because it combines sheep and the nativity story, and it's just perfect for St. James. So. I'm so grateful to a whole host of people who came together to make this possible for our students. And um, I hope you enjoy the show. So without further ado, here are our students. Road leading up to it, and because it was always dark red like Christmas, but I never knew what you did here. Well, to create the ugly sweater, we do everything from raising the sheep to shearing the wool to weaving cloth to spinning the yarn. Oh, that would explain the sheep pen next to the factory. You've worked here for three years. It's all about authenticity, of course, taking it way over the top. But that's all you. I mean, we make ugly Christmas sweaters. Oh, we dabbled in fruitcake, but that was a disaster. 10,000 we couldn't sell and you can't throw them away because they aren't biodegradable. What did you do with all of them? Well, that cobblestone road you love that leads to the factory. Yes? Those aren't cobblestones. <laughs> I've devoted my life to 
this company as my parents did and my grandparents before them. Never once has an Ebenezer missed a deadline, failed to deliver an order, or dropped a stitch in one of our world-famous ugly Christmas sweaters. So I just want to say thank you for the extra work to get this urgent order, our largest order ever, out the door on Christmas Eve. When it is finished, we will throw a huge Christmas party. What's going on, Tiny Tom? I'm sorry to interrupt, but there's a sheep cow in the weaving machine. Again? Yes. We talked about this. First you shear the sheep, then you put the wool in the weaving machine. The sequence is important. Right. Weaving machine first. Sheep shearing second. No. Oh, right. Shearing first. Someone help Tom get the poor sheep out of the machine and make sure it's all right. Then after the order is shipped, the party starts. <laughs> Wonderful news, Sam. Why don't we get Carol started and get this final order out the door? You call? These are my assistants, Humbugs. Hello, Humbugs. Merry Christmas. Humbugs, would you fill us in on the latest sales data? I have to make sure we're tracking our projections. Carol, for generations, no one in my family has ever missed our Christmas projections. Every year, our sales go up, up, up. It appears that we are tracking, boss. The final order we have to get out tonight will put us over the top. Once again, exceeding expectations. Our new employee is here. He's here to help us weave these words and get them out the door. Perfect. Carol, welcome to the team and welcome to the ugly sweater business. So have you seen the looms in the weaving machine where we knit the claws and the sewing machine where we put it all together? What do you think so far? I think the poor sheep are terrified. Mr. Cratchit. Crochet. How do you know when a sweater is truly ugly or how ugly it is? Good question. We can calibrate how ugly a sweater is by comparing it to a sweater to be considered the ugliest Christmas sweater ever. It was found in the turn of the 19th century. We keep it preserved. It's a masterpiece. Bruno, the ugly sweater, bring it! Bring it! (laughs) 
You need to wear these goggles, Carol. Everyone, avert your eyes! It's... it's horrible! Thank you! Take it away, Bruno! Humbugs! Yes? yes? Do you think we can get this order out tonight? The order is for eight. 104 and we have 278 ready. All systems are a go, boss. Are you worried? Well, maybe a little. No one in my family has ever, we know, has ever missed a deadline, failed to deliver an order, or dropped a stitch in one of our world famous ugly Christmas sweaters. You won't either. The power is out. The power is out. Never mind, it's back on. No, it's not. Those are just the emergency lights. They're battery powered. Very well, then. We'll have to make do if we're going to get this order out tonight. So, do you think we still have a chance of making a deadline, Sam? Well, I've got good news and bad news. What's the bad news? Christmas is coming. And the good news? Christmas is coming! I said, I'm here to spin yarns. Tell me you make the rest of your sweaters. <coughs> You're sure? Sure, I'm sure. I just got out of church and started right over. The choir was just singing the story of Christmas, how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, was foretold by the prophets. I thought it was kind of prophetic when I got the call. I thought I could spread some love and good cheer tonight, too. And what does the prophecy of the Messiah have to do with sweaters? Well, think about when you create a new design for a sweater. Before you start weaving, you first design the pattern. Someone watching the loom won't understand the design until they see the sweater. But you know what it would look like before the weaving started. 
That's like God's story. He had a plan all along to give the world a savior and that's what Christmas is all about. And why have you come to tell me this? We didn't. We came to wear sweaters. You asked me. Anyway, we better get started. He vanished, just like an apparition. been visited by an apparition. An apple what? An apparition. You know, a ghostly creature said to teach me? Really? I don't see anybody. She called herself Marlo Jacobs. She spun a yarn of prophecy in Christmas. She said it shows how God had a design all along to send a savior. That's right, boss. More than 700 years before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah wrote, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. He'll be called the Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah's predicting the first Christmas. And he even told us who he'd be in Isaiah 7:14. Therefore the Lord will give you a son. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. What are you dressed for and what are you doing? I'm going to find electricity for us. From the storm using a kite and a key, like Ben Franklin. Pretty sure that's not how it works. And what's on the string? It's a key. That's a key card for a hotel. It's plastic. It's also not metal. So? I'm going back to my office to see if I can solve this problem. We'll be right back. Was it Samantha Ebenezer? Yes. I'm here for you. I'm here to rescue you from the darkness. But you must open the door. Okay, hold on. I'm not falling for this again. The What's your name? I'm Fuzzy Wig. I'm here with the power company. And this is right. We're here to restore your light and power to your business. What? No one would come out on a terrible night like this. Of course we come out on nights like this. I'm usually only needed when things are terrible. And I do it because I get to bring people into light when they're in darkness. Even on Christmas Eve? 
especially on Christmas Eve. I mean, when you think about it, Christmas is all about bringing light into the world of darkness. Another visitor on Christmas Eve. Is that the message you'll bring to me? It's great to turn on people's electricity when it goes out. I love my job, but if you think about it, the whole world is darkness because of sin. Isaiah, the people walking in darkness, darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. That's right. Jesus called himself the light of the world. When he was born in Bethlehem, there were shepherds nearby, and there was so much light in the sky, they were terrified. For somebody in my line of work, that's the best part of the Christmas story. What happened to you? I found electricity. It is not what we expected. You guys, there was another visitor here. They left before they finished their tale about the light the shepherds saw. They said God brought light to the world when the Savior was born. Real light, and the shepherds saw it. That was the glory of God said. It shone bright in the middle of the night. It was the announcement that God's Son had been born on earth. And afterwards, the shepherds came to the manger to worship Jesus, the light of the world. Well, to men, are you okay, Sam? Maybe you should relax for a little while. <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! The visitor, that's how it is in the story. What? What story? A Christmas carol. What? What do you mean, what? You said a Christmas carol. No, not carol. Never mind. What is the purpose of this visit? Christmas presents. No, no, there's no visitor of Christmas present. I'm here to deliver Christmas presents. My name's Anna Zahn, and... I'm a deliverer, and that's Anne. So you have a message for me, oh deliverer? Nope, maybe tomorrow. 
Shipping's a li little delayed due to the storm. And of course, supply chain issues. No, a story, a message? Do so you have something prepared to tell me? Nothing planned. Then are you here to give me a sign? No, I need you to sign. I need you to sign saying you've seen these boxes. So is there no hope? No hope at Christmas. Christmas is all about hope. Are you the deliverer of hope? No, just the deliverer of gifts. But Christmas is about gifts in a way. The first gifts that were ever given for Jesus and his family, given by the wise men who traveled across the known world to honor him. Gotta get another couple of boxes. Gifts delivered. Yes, I can see, boss. Looks like a lot of them. No, tell me about the gifts that were given to Jesus by the wise men. Your power's back on. The lightning did a number on your wiring. And on Tiny Tom. Either way, it's sorted out, but your limbs and weavers are working now, too. Humbugs! We're right here, boss. Do you think. What's the order count? We have to be close. Maybe we can still finish. I have some good news, boss. As of right now, we have completed 6,893 ugly Christmas sweaters. But I have some bad news. With pedal power and mostly hand stitching, we were able to get the order out, Sam. I knew it. We were so close. I'm the first Ebenezer to miss a deadline. It was out of our hands, boss. I'm here to deliver the big Christmas present order to be delivered tonight. I'm sorry to say we don't have it. We simply couldn't finish it. Well, it's not a trip waste to have a pickup of Tiny Tom. What is that, Tom? It's just a few presents I'm shipping out to my family. Manger seems like this one here. 
This is beautiful, Tom. You made this? Yes, we go to the mall to watch the sheep. We give him his gifts to help tell the story of Christmas. Emmanuel was born the light of the world. The angels told the shepherds and they came to worship him. The wise men brought their gifts to the king. What a great idea. Thanks, that might be one of our better ideas. Tonight, each visitor brought me a piece of the story. They wove a Christmas yarn to tell me the good news of Jesus' birth. To God's people who must have waited for hundreds of years for the promised Messiah, it must have seemed like God forgot his promises. But the Bible says that at the right time, God sent his son to set us free. We may not have met our big deadline, but I'd say this gift arrived just in time.
moved to Selber after missing the deadline. Humbugs. What? No, I was just saying humbugs. Yes, I'm disappointed that we didn't get our big order out tonight, but the most important thing is what my three visitors showed me. What is that, Sam? You know I love the ugly sweater business. It puts a smile on everyone's face at Christmas time. Ugly is beautiful. But the three visitors reminded me of what really matters. Jesus, the promised Messiah, the light of the world, the deliverer. Way more important than a gag gift is God's gift to us. Emmanuel, God with us. I made a note of it, boss. So are we still going to be in the ugly sweater business? Of course we are, Carol. And we might diversify a bit, too. I think Tom had a great idea of spreading the good news of great joy. That's yeah, a great, great idea. idea. That's a great idea. Employees of unique gifts from luxurious yarns, let the Christmas celebrations begin. God bless us, everyone. <laughs> enjoyed the show. We have several people to thank for their hard work. Lots of we want to thank all of you as parents for all you did in costumes, helping the parents, helping the students know their lines, learn the songs. So first, thanks, thanks for all of you. We'd like to thank all of our teachers for all that they did. We'd like to thank in a special way our assistants who were at all the practices and helped with, with our assistants come forward, please. We have something special for the assistants. I'd also like to thank Mr. Michael Sweat for helping us with sound.
Thank you so much. He's helped us many times over the years. A special thank you to this year. We'd like to thank Mrs. Eileen Garris, who really stepped up. She handled so many details. We're so grateful to her for doing it without any, um, any trouble at all. So thank you, Eileen. And we'd like to thank our choreographer, um, Mrs. Zagar, for all of her help. So true, this was a team effort and a beautiful testimony of the great community we have at St. James. I'm so grateful to everyone. I think that is all. So have a wonderful Merry Christmas and God bless you all.